there's been there's been a couple seconds of silence, so it's all good. Yes. I mean, that's all all I need is is enough of the break in like the sound waves that I can just cut it there for the uh, you know the BTS audio because that's all we're going to get is audio this week since yeah, you don't yeah. have a webcam unless you use yeah, your laptop, yeah. which fuck your laptop. It's kind of a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Well, if you buy a new one, don't buy a MacBook Pro. Yeah, no, that was definitely not the plan. Even I mean, you, you could. Apparently fixed it, kind of? Um, well, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that. I need to read this article for myself. Hang on. McDonald's worker body slams fucking someone or another? Yeah, yeah, yeah she yeah, body slams. Yeah, was important. Yeah, the oh, video that's, is pretty oh, funny. Oh, that's, that's where these memes are coming from. I've seen the memes. I oh, just God. didn't know that it's this loud. is the video that they've come from. It auto-played. <laughs> wonder what it would take to download this video and just insert it into the podcast. I don't know. I mean, I've seen, like, the Joe Rogan podcast. They uh, they all the time have, like, where he'll minimize uh, holy, holy. whatever video they're watching and it'll play, like, on the bottom right or whatever. I, I mean, I could Batman. totally do that, but... Yeah. It's like... like they they're pro- have a professional mm-hmm. editor, but, you know, I don't know what the you know actual difficulty and that is oh, not it's that difficult good. truthfully I, yeah, I'm right, just lazy I, you know alright let's just watch this watch this video <laughs> I love it so much it's I, fucking it's just fucking crazy I haven't actually watched the video I, I, I did look at all the Instagram photos though and I read mm-hmm. the article and it's like yeah, she gets Holy body slammed. She gets punched. Shit. Well, the thing is, like, she throws the throws a shake on the chick, and then when she come the the McDonald's employee who comes out, she picks up a tray and hits her, and the the McDonald's employee doesn't even react. She picks the chick up and immediately starts slamming her. They finally break up the fight, and the stupid customer keeps going, starts hitting another employee. So the other employee just hauls off and starts hitting her in the head too, and then the first employee comes back. It was, oh, it was great. She gets fucked up, basically. Yeah, yeah. So what uh, happens with first... this story is, guys, customer goes into a McDonald's, asks for you know a free water cup, which of course they give out free water cups at a lot of a lot of, of McDonald's, and the girl starts filling it up with soda, so the manager cuts it off. Supervisor cuts off the thing, and so that kind of starts a fight where. The, I, I guess the the uh, customer <clears throat> threw a milkshake at her and then hit her with a tray when she came out to confront her about it. And after she hit her with the tray, the, the, the lady just beats the shit out of her. No, oh, they start to have a brawl. Yeah, they break it up. She hits another employee that's basically trying to just hold her back to stop the fight. Right. That employee starts swinging on her. <laughs> it's it's just a clusterfuck. So how you guys doing today? Uh, we're the ungodly geeks. Uh, I'm, I'm Joe, Jake. and Jake is here. Yay, Jake! Yep. Hello. Things are kind of kind of fucking up. We can't help it. We're over the internet for the second week in a row. Um, yeah, we got uh, still got to pick up a mixer board. It's it's kind of difficult to drop that you know money on that when we don't have it. <laughs> we don't have money. So. Yeah, yeah. It'd be more detail, probably. Reasons I can very much sympathize sympathize with that McDonald's employee. Right, right, yeah. Working, retail, working just, you know, if you're a retailer and food, kind of. Yeah, it just kind of sucks. Yeah. Which is, I mean, and, and let me tell you the like the amount of times that I wish I could punch a customer in the face, or at least just go off on them. Yeah. Say what I want to say to them. Yeah, like you know, yell at them because you know they're you're yelling at me over a dollar off coupon. It's just a dollar. Well if it's just a fucking dollar, what's the big fucking deal? I can't exactly. do it. Get the fuck out. You know, but I mean, hey, I had a customer yell at me. Joe was there. He got to interact with this customer too. He got to yell at me over a conversation I that still he wasn't that. even That's crazy. Yeah, that he wasn't even in that he took my comments out of context about and then just like demanded a gift card from Joe. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't demand a gift card from me. He he decided. He decided to pick on me too, which, as we all know, is not a great idea. And, and poorly. Uh, 
Yeah, it, it didn't end well for him. He basically got to leave being called an idiot, and I kept my job and didn't get in any trouble. So, yeah. I mean, it, it didn't end well. It didn't end badly, per se. He was just an asshole from the get-go. But uh, he, he started getting on me because I was chewing gum. <laughs> like, no, seriously, that's what it was. See, that's why I got us when this guy was going around and – and just decided, I'm going to be a total fucking prick. Like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. You're mad at someone at work doing gum? Like, yeah, no, I mean, I'm standing there. I'm at, I'm at our CSM podium. I'm looking over the schedule for the day. It's like 6 o'clock. In, pardon me, pardon me. It's like 6 o'clock in the morning. So it's not like, you know, it's, it's early in the night or anything. And I'm just sitting there. And he looks at me. Hey, Doc, you need more gum? I'm like, no, I'm good. And then he goes into a spiel about how it's unprofessional to be chewing gum. And it's like, okay, I'll let you have that one. But then he starts laying into me and going off and stuff. And it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But it didn't help that I did make a smart-ass comment saying, I didn't know it was unprofessional to keep my breath smelling fresh. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I won't launch into the, I'll sum it up. He literally said that I was talking negatively about the store. Yeah. Because I was just making a comment about certain managers in the far distant past that I had worked under, took that completely out of context, and then I thought he was joking. He was like, "Why don't you say it a little freaking louder?" And I was like, "Oh, I could talk louder." Yeah, and no, he, you're really good at talking yeah, loud, Jake. Yeah, we, we all know that. Yeah. Oh man, so I just don't get it. Like, like, just wh- why? Well, I mean, do you really have nothing better to do than to come into Walmart at six in the morning and just like start yelling at people for conversations that don't include you? I yeah, don't know, man. Yeah, pretty I don't much. Know. I mean, I mean that. Uh, I still that, wish I was there for that. It, it was fun. Ah, fuck! I would have told him, "Hey, you ever tried working retail?" <laughs> I'll fucking comment a little bit louder. How shitty the job is. I mean, yeah, <laughs> like, like, uh, yeah, we can have a job. You know, to sit there and tell us that we can't be negative about it. Like, no, you you can't tell me I can't complain about the shit that I have to deal with that I shouldn't have to deal with. You know, like, yeah. I mean, you aren't, you're not, you know, being. Uh, dude, just like I said, I think the guy just went out of his way to be an asshole that day. Like he he's or as I told Joe later on, I think the guy forgot he wasn't on the internet. Yeah, right. I mean, the guy was like, like I said, I can definitely tell you that like if the guy wanted to take me in a fight, he was going to whip my ass no matter what. <laughs> but I mean, oh, sure, there's plenty of awkward ass people in fit that I'm sure are tough as fuck. But yeah, they still spend all their time on fit watching anime. After they no, I mean, I, I the guy he was he was more of a redneck type person yeah. than a basement oh, yeah. dweller type person. He wasn't even like particularly built, just. I also don't. Me and me and uh, me and my manager also agreed that we don't think he was sober. We think uh, he was drunk or the influence of some, some, some something or another. Cause he could he have been on see, something. I mean, yeah, according he just didn't uh, be in his right mind. According to the cashier that was checking him out at the time, like he was apparently shaking with anger because I was just getting under his skin so so easily, <laughs> which is funny. Which was like, funny because he tried to get under my skin by like attacking how much money I make, which is probably more than he does, honestly. I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure it is. Unless he, he works like a construction cool. job, I probably make more money than he does. He's like, at least I make more than four dollars an hour and I just looked at him and said, Hey, congratulations, so do I <laughs> I mean, hey, I don't Anytime know what you you have is, someone's but... response, you know they've to the point where they've they've got nothing. Yep, they've just yeah. they've realized that the, that whatever douchey shit they're trying to pull doesn't matter. Yeah, and they're just trying to save a little bit of face. In my experience, when people realize they're losing an argument, they'll turn away from the facts and start insulting like you personally. Yeah, it's just like all right, that's when you know you've won the argument when they start insulting you personally. Well, like uh, that, that was the thing though. That's where that's kind of where he started the argument was the, the kind of personal insults. 
and he was and like i could tell right away because i've been bullied a lot in my life and i could tell right away that he was trying to get under my skin it's like i'm gonna flip this on you because that's this is just gonna be fun and it was fun and when he started going off like this is when i made the idiot comment and i looked him in his face and basically said he was an idiot um he was sitting there complimenting her saying she was the only decent associate in the store and then he looks you know he starts with me and then he says something along the lines of I don't know why all these associates are so shitty. And I said, because we have to deal with idiots like you. <laughs> oh, that made that made me feel so – when you told me that after the fact, it made me feel so vindicated. I was like, oh, yes. It's like I knew I could rely on you. And he didn't have anything to really say when I looked. All he had – all he could do was look at me and put his shit in his cart. And he's actually kind of lucky that I didn't cancel his order as soon as he started cursing at me. But at the same time, I'm thinking, no, I can sit here, insult the hell out of them because all decency is thrown out the window at this point. Yeah, I'm supposed to provide a good customer service experience, but the moment you sit there and and you go into that asshole mode, all of that is thrown out the window. So I'm going like, okay, well, you want to be an asshole? I can I can be an asshole, buddy. That's one thing I'm really really good at. And so I would immediately went just full asshole on him, and you know. I was like, you know, I could cancel his order, but like, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to insult him and take his money. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That's what There's no better victory. Is that, you know, I'm a professional, it's, you know, at my job. Uh, and I don't get to, even when people are giving me a hard time, I'm not going to go out of that until they start, you know, like this guy yeah. starts start swearing, start being whatever stupid fucking shit they start doing. At that point, they've just given me free reign to say whatever they want. And that is the best feeling in the world. Or you can just be like, you know what? Get the fuck out. Which that I've done before, too. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fun, too. Is they start that shit, and it's like, you know, I'm not gonna sell you a fucking thing. Get yeah, the fuck I, I, out. And then the if thing. they complain about that, I'm just gonna call the police and have them thrown out. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. We have the power to just throw you out. Like, yeah. we don't have to sell you anything if we don't yeah, want to sell you anything. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, especially if uh, somebody's giving employees a hard time. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, you walk over and they think the manager's going to side with them. And it's like, oh, get the fuck out. You're not going to talk shit to my employee like that. Yeah. I think that's so funny because all of them, like all of these uh, unruly customers want to come in and think that can just cause problems. Like they think the manager is just going to side with them and all the manager is going to do is realize, I mean, unless of course you're right and the employee is in the wrong, but yeah. like, most of the time all they do is be like, okay, so if you're causing problems, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Right, basically, yeah. I mean, that that's I've done that. You know, Tim's done that. You know, other people have done that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's let's move on. Let's talk about some actual stuff here. Things that yeah, are yeah. fun. Um, Seriously, guys, if you get the chance, check out that video, the McDonald's brawl. Great. Oh my gosh! Like I said in the comment, though, specifically about that, uh, everything she got, she deserved because their fucking ice cream machine worked for once, and then she went ahead and wasted it by throwing it at the employee because uh -huh, right. the employee it's stopped her from down. stealing soda. Yeah. I mean, is that like everybody knows that that McDonald's is serious about the fucking soda stuff now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you like, ask for I, water, you sit there and you start stealing. So like you're stealing like straight up. You are stealing. Like I, I had that happen to me when I worked at a uh, subway, you know, when I was a little younger and didn't care as much. Like be like, hey, I'm going to get a cup of water. Start putting them out and doing it. Oh, that's that's stealing, man. <laughs> yep. It's, and it's one of those times where you can tell a customer off and you're in the right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know necessarily that, you know, punching them is in the right. But in this particular oh, no. instance, this was definitely <laughs> in the right because, you know, she fucking started it. And then she hit the, she hit the lady with a tray. Mm -hmm. So that's fucked up, man. So let's and move on a little bit. We got some a uh, little bit of news that we want to discuss. Um so we talked last week. We talked about, you know, the Apple MacBook Pros not being able to reach their full speed, and, um, and obviously that's under certain tasks like the uh, video editing and all that. Which, if you're buying a top of the line MacBook Pro with four terabytes of storage space and a really high end 
processor and tons of RAM, you're, that's what you're using it for. It's going to be your mobile workstation. And if it can't reach its full speed, that's a problem, right? Yeah. Sure. What the hell's the point? Yeah, like it kind of defeats the purpose. You know, if you're going to release something like that. Well, according to Apple, they didn't, you know, test it in those particular use cases. And the thermal throttling is a real issue. They admitted that. But it's caused by a software bug rather than, you know, just poor engineering and design because you have a six core, 12 threaded processor doing video editing. It's going to heat the fuck up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, <clears throat> that's what they said. So there's going to be, uh, apparently there is a missing digital key, and I throw that up in air quotes, that impacts the thermal management system. I have nothing to add to that, because I have no fucking clue what that would be, or what that would... The CPU manages its own thermals, that it throttles itself, and... I guess the over- operating system can override that, but I don't know, man. It's just yeah. It's, it's I, I was gonna say. I mean, I, I I don't know much about computers. I mean, literally every computer issue that I have, no matter how remote, besides turning it on and off, I'll take to either Joe or Luke, mostly Joe. But I mean, it doesn't seem like software issue would fix much of anything if it already can't maintain its own temperature like you- like like the thing is it's 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 very thin it's made to be thin and lightweight sure and it's, sure and it's an apple macbook so it's also made to be very quiet so they won't let it they won't let the fans spin up very fast it's because they don't want the fans to make noise because it's all about style and substance so they're basically you know crippling the performance of their own machines for aesthetics it's just um, how, how much does this thing cost? The, um, the top of the line one that I mentioned runs like sixty seven hundred dollars. Yeah, the <laughs> lowest one was I think they said twenty four or twenty eight. What? Yeah, I mean oh, they're eight hundred dollars for the low end. 20, That's a lot problems. of money. Yeah. Like that is a lot of money. If and, I'm dropping sixty seven hundred dollars on a laptop, it better be able to. Me. Yeah, like, no, it better be able to replace a desktop. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Easily. Like, you get most high-end, I mean, for me, being a PC gamer, most high-end gaming rig can get for, like, two or 3000 My My PC could easily perform just as well as that high-end MacBook Pro, and it costs a third of the price, literally. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, don't, don't sit there. Come on, man. Don't. Like, yeah, fuck, you're going to you. charge more and then still have... For that much money and have an issue like, Come yeah, on. no, it, that's, it's that's it's just silly. It's dumb. It's really stupid. So, yeah, that that was just I wanted to kind of give you guys an update on that. That uh, you know they they issued a software fix, and honestly, it was about three days ago as of the recording of this. So we yeah. released that podcast, and then like a day later, they did something about it. But I I don't know. It's just I mean to sit there. That's what you're buying it for. Why would you not test that? What I want to know is, did this is this fix? If that's took for this big cooling issue, like it does it work? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, did the software update actually fix anything? Have it, has anybody done any? Have been able to do any speed tests with it? Basically, according then? to a fella named John Pool, um, mm-hmm. who is a geek, the geek developer of Geekbench, which is a, a benchmarking software. Um, <clears throat> they he he did apply the latest update. He ran reran a, the Geekbench build test on it. Um, it's slightly faster, but processor frequency stays stable when building, which is comforting. Still technically slower than the i7, but close enough that practically it doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. So like the scores on Geekbench came really really within each other, uh, really really close within seconds of the build test. Um, so there are certain tests like single core test and burst processing tests where the i9 still beats the i7. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's just... Um, still not up to the speed it should be. It's not like, Yeah, it's not up to the performance you would expect with uh, the uh, i9. i9. Yeah, because you sit there, you go, you add the more cores, 
Uh, well, you know, they both still have six cores, but the i9 is supposed to outperform. It's, you know, half a gigahertz faster, but it's just not, it's not performing. Now, granted, the build test was within like two seconds, two to three seconds. So yeah. not a huge amount of time, but still, you, you expect that because that's what they're advertising and that's what they're charging. They're charging that premium. Because I think it's oh, like the lowest call, like I think it's like a three hundred dollar difference to go from the i seven to the i nine. Yeah, mm. and I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just for me, it's like, come on, you guys can surely do better. Yeah, you think so? You, you would. I mean, come on, it's Apple. They've been around for years. They make great pieces of hardware. They really do. But this is just a piece of hardware that's. Nowhere near as good. Hmm. Well, essentially, unless you have a very specific case use for the i9, buying it over the i7 does, it doesn't really seem like it's worth the extra money. You don't need it. So there you go. I'm throwing that out there. If you were in, if you're a listener of us and you were going to buy a MacBook Pro, don't bother with the i9. The i7 is going to do just as well. Yeah, it doesn't sound like there's and cost you less three hundred bucks for nothing. But yeah, cost you less money. Again, if you're buying a, a MacBook Pro and you're going to buy a brand new one anyway, it's less about actual cost for like quality and more about I'm buying the best MacBook Pro I can just because. I mean, yeah, if you're yeah, going to do that, like, fine, buy whatever you want. But if you are buying it yeah. um, for this specific use case, if you're buying it because you want the performance. Don't bother with the i9 variant. It's yeah. just yeah, it's exactly. just not worth the extra money. Get yourself the i7 and throw in a bigger heart, a bigger you know drive yourself, and move on. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately, that it's going to be worth more. Because I mean, to sit there and pay sixty seven hundred dollars for a four terabyte, you know, MacBook Pro, I, I don't think four terabyte SSDs cost that much. So it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, that's what you get. That's, I mean, you know, that's kind of what you come to expect from Mac, but I would also expect it to meet. Yeah. I, I, right now, right now you could buy the low end MacBook pro and put a four terabyte drive in it and still mm. pay around 30, around $3,000 less. Jesus. <laughs> Wow, four yeah. terabytes. Yeah. yeah. Have, they, uh, have they fixed have they made the keyboards not shit? <laughs> the keyboards No, the keyboards are still the same. The keyboards can't yeah. be fixed in software. So Yeah, no, I know that I just mean the new the new uh MacBook so that keyboards better than the old ones. I mean the keyboards have always been fine on the MacBook Pros. Um uh, uh, that's not what I hear from like people who do a lot of typing. It, that, they're, they don't have any feedback. There's almost no. Well, I mean, they're designed to be super thin. If you're buying a key, yeah. if you're buying something like that to type on, you're already killing. You're, you're just defeating yourself. Um, you're making a mistake anyway. Right. I mean, like my razor is just as thin, but I honestly think the keyboard is fine. And my my HP Chromebook is not much thicker than my razor, and it's it's a decent keyboard. Yeah. But if you're like you. you you don't buy an ultra thin laptop and expect a mind blowing, super responsive keyboard like well, like no, nothing like yeah. that. Apparently, theirs is known to be damn near a goddamn touch, a touch pad. I mean, like, yeah, almost yeah, no the, the chitlin style keyboards where yeah, the keys are really thin. There's no fucking room to put anything in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, yeah, that was when I was teen. And I first started playing uh, World of Warcraft for the first time, ironically enough. Um, <laughs> I had a friend who was like, are this computer? And then one day I asked him, I was like, so what's the difference between a Mac and, you know, like a, like everything else? Because like I said, I, I know nothing about computers. And all he said to me was he just looked at me and was like, you never play on a Mac, Jake. Never. <laughs> Under any circumstances. And I took that as like gospel. So like going up and getting my own computer, I just was just like, for some reason, Macs are terrible. I'm not to use them, so I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, for gaming, uh, Mac is slightly better than Linux, 
in some regards that and that i guess that it might be supported more i i don't really know but mac is definitely not for gaming mac is for uh about the only thing that i truly think they have over any computer is uh, video editing and that's only if you are also investing in final cut pro um or just using final cut because uh, i'll give that apple's video editing software is really good really top notch but um i mean honestly i i don't know i i don't think it's worth spending five or six grand on a laptop just to run something like final cut pro like no no it's no yeah it doesn't sound worth it at all to be completely honest I mean, that's just my viewpoint on it, especially since I built a $2,000 gaming PC and I've got something like Vegas, which I got on a Humble Bundle for $23. <laughs> yeah, you can keep your $6,000 MacBook Pro. I'll just stick with this custom desktop that can play games, too. Mm-hmm. It can do both. Yay, me. <laughs> so I guess Nickelodeon um, is releasing, releasing a uh, game called Nickelodeon Kart Racers. Yeah. I, is, uh, I have no expectations that this will be good. Right. Mario probably, Kart. Probably most likely just going to be some, like, cash grab. Right. But at the same time, the fact that it's going to have, like, Rugrats and all these Hang old on. cartoons, and, okay. including newer ones. Okay, so the real test on whether or not this game will be good is if Tommy has a death stare when he throws a shell at someone. No, no, it has to be not Tommy. Tommy is a main character, so it has to be Chucky. Chucky, I think. Yeah. Chucky okay, or yeah, yeah, Chucky yeah. or Patrick would be. Oh, no, not Patrick, because Luigi is intelligent. So it would have to be Chucky. <laughs> Chucky would have to be. Chucky is the is the Luigi equivalent in Rugrats or in the Nickelodeon universe, I think, because he plays second fiddle to, to Tommy, kind of like how Luigi plays second fiddle to Mario. So. Uh yeah, I, if I have it, it has to be Chucky. But I'm sitting here looking at this like it basically like just from the screenshots we have here, it looks basically like a Mario Kart, not with, with maybe worse mechanics, because it doesn't look like the mechanics are very good. I could be wrong. No, that's what. No, the cart. Fully look- expecting it to just be basically shovelware. Right. But at the same time. It's fucking Rugrats. Right. <laughs> Rugrats and Spongebob and Patrick. If you could play a Squidward, that'll be amazing. And the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and the Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's it's the, uh, looks like the new style of Ninja Turtles, so. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Fine. I, I, not better than the new, be, new ones that are about to come Never going to be as good as the old, but it's fine. Um, um, it looks like there's a bunch of different cart sizes. So and, yeah, I mean, with the new Mario Kart, you actually get different three different vehicles. Um, okay, yeah. See, I never played the new Mario Kart. I just Mario, know the memes. Yeah, Mario Kart Eight, you get uh, bikes, carts, and uh, fucking off road vehicles, like bigger off road vehicle type things. Yeah. And, on top uh, of that, there's lots and lots of different styles. Oh yeah, you you can change your tires. You can change your uh, um, you can change your tires. You can change something else. I don't know. It's been a while since I've played it. You can change the cart itself. The There's cart itself, the tires, cars, and then, the tires, the glider. Yes, the glider. That's what it was. Yeah. The hang glider. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Where you went off like the ramps and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen across that. chasms and shit. Mm-hmm. So I mean, Mario oh. Kart is fun. You should, you should so, come over and play it, Jake. The I, article I here play. says that. I should. Uh, You're right. The article here says that uh, the animated characters from the likes of SpongeBob, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Rugrats, Hey Arnold, and more race on 24 different slime-themed tracks to become the champions of children's TV. <laughs> See, I mean, listen. It just some, sounds like, awesome. Some, like, like, get Doug in there, get Ren and Stimpy. Like, let's let's just let's get uh, the... Ren and Stimpy wasn't a Nickelodeon property. Um... um Ren and Stimpy was, I, uh, I think they were owned by MTV. No, but they were aired on MTV later. Um, yeah. Well, I don't think Nickelodeon has the right. I mean, maybe they do. I don't know. I, um, you could get I, Angry I might Beavers. be wrong. I thought it was. Like, um, um, what's that? What, there's one more show that I can't think of. Um, Angry Beavers. I think Angry Beavers. Cat Dog. Cat um, Dog. Cat Dog. That's what I was thinking of. I, I would be down for Angry Beavers. Give me, yeah. Let me let me drive around as Norb. Fucking Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be that'd be cool. 
Uh, uh, was fairly odd, yeah, fairly odd parents. Fairly odd parents, yeah. That'd be fun. I mean, you have a, one of the yeah, no, um, one of these screenshots is fucking man. Reptar. Yeah, no, man, Ren Simpy. Timmy Turner, come on, let's go. Ren Simpy was Reptar. a Nickelodeon show. It is a Nickelodeon yeah, that's, what I, that's what I thought. Okay. But who owns them now? Uh, Paramount, who... Um, oh, okay. Which well, no, no, no. Them? Paramount uh, has their... It distributes them on DVD. Um, hmm. Production companies... No, but I don't Either know. Either way, I can tell you 100. percent Red and Stippy are not going to be in this. I, I oh, know, no, but I'm saying not. they should. <laughs> don't don't get your hopes up, Jake, because this is I'm not. This is I'm... Nicktoons kids. Like you, if we're I can dream. Super lucky, you might get um, uh, Rocco's Modern Life. Yes, that's what it was. Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I watched every single one of those episodes when I was a kid. What is it? Yeah. Remember, be 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 courteous. Be something. Be sexy. I can't remember. The little courteous. poster that was on the back oh, like, at his courteous, job. Um, yeah. Be, be prompt or be nice or something like that. I, I know the third one yeah, was when he be was sexy. A sexy he, was a, he was a sex phone operator or whatever. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Um, like that, that was a kid show, baby, too. Oh, baby, yeah. oh, baby. I, I, I remember <laughs> specifically the day that I rewatched that show when I was like old enough to actually understand, and it just like – opened my mind i was like no way you went oh yeah it's it's fun going back and watching shows that, that we watched as children and like now you're catching all the dirty jokes like you can do that with spongebob too because they were mm-hmm. like like they they're they're clever in how they they hide these in there that they 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 sit there they make it mind-numbingly entertainment entertaining enough for children but then they sneak those little jokes in there for the adults the the parents who have to sit there and watch the shit with the kids. And I, I like, you can sit there, you go back and you can just catch jokes like, Oh shit. I never, I never caught that mm-hmm. before. When, Cause you didn't know when you were a kid. Okay. I'm looking, I got to find what this poster says on Rocco's modern life. Uh, <laughs> I think it's like, be kind, be professional, be uh sexier. I don't think it right says sexy. It might not. Um, but I remember. Uh, yeah. No, I, I Honestly, I hope this game ends up good. I hope whoever's oh, developed okay. Here it, it is. Here it is. That, like, like Mario Kart is a game. It's all all ages game. You don't have to be a kid's game be a terrible one-dimensional game. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So what does it say? It says, remember, be hot, be naughty, be courteous. Oh, it's even worse than we thought. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is that is amazing. Well, this is, and this is only going to come out for thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's only going to be forty bucks. So I mean, at that price, it's not too bad. Um, you know, it, it can't be as bad as Monopoly on Switch, which is the same price. So, oh god. From what I understand, um, it's just a just pile of shitty bugs. Like, just terrible. Like, th- there's actually a thing where if the AI is losing badly enough, it will just stop playing. It'll just... So it's being done by <laughs> Game Mill Entertainment. So, it's, so like... it's basically your family as you're growing up. Like, someone starts winning and then everyone just gets up from the table as they hate you and then that's it. Uh yeah, more or less. Like they they basically designed the AI to uh, rage quit. Wait, what game is that? Monopoly. Monopoly. <laughs> Monopoly. There, there's a bug. Well, there. hey, you know what? That's realist for Monopoly. That's what I'm saying, right? Right. Yeah. No, I that's mean, you're totally that, right. That's pretty goddamn realist. That's some yeah. how forward thinking. But <laughs> it, it's like yeah, except it's not intentional. So. Yeah. Oh, that feels so good. But it's just ah, uh, it, it's just it's terrible, man. <laughs> oh. so yeah, this is the studios that did that Cartoon Network Battle Crashers game, uh, and then a bunch of just yeah. Ralph a Pro series fishing, <laughs> Deer Hunter Reloaded, Big Buck Hunter. Oh, gee, Big Buck Hunter. Yeah, are you smarter than a fifth grader? The game. Oh wow! The, list. On, on this website, on NintendoLife.com, their average review score for for them for their games three point five out of ten. Yeah, their average. Say, I think is... the only game I've actually like seen that did decent for them was Doodle Dump. Oh, on the God. on the DS. I, the DS. I know that. Yeah. Um, 
like I said, probably shovelware. Hopefully it's just as long as it's okay and I get to play with those characters, then that that's one of those times where I I would like a better game, but you've got me on the nostalgia a little bit. So as long as you make something that's competent and at least like a six out of ten, seven out of ten, I'll probably enjoy it. I mean, I gotta say, like, it doesn't but take much to make a it doesn't take much to make a fun cart game, and exactly. it really doesn't. Yeah, and you can totally sit there and and completely like fuck everything up with the physics. As long as the game is playable, you could fuck the physics up, and we can have fun with it. Exactly. exactly. So I mean, I, I I still remember back on like fucking I think it was the GameCube. Uh, there was a Hot Wheels game. That was just, I mean, compared to like Mario Kart or anything like that, it was trash. Except as for a fucking just racing game, it was insanely fun. It was a simple kids game. But, I mean, like it was Hot Wheels. The tracks were like hot tracks. So you're doing loops and shit through uh, just crazy tracks, like flying mm. off the track and landing back on it and stuff. And oh, it was wow. just fun as hell. So I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take much to make those games. Pretty I mean, pretty I, I was going to say games like that, like Mar- like the Mario Kart games, same with like the Mario Party games, like, you know, games that like the family can sit around and play or you and a bunch of friends can sit around and play. As long as they don't try too hard, most of the time the games end up being really good. You know, cool. like if you just let your players have fun with the game, yeah. instead of, you know, trying too hard, then normally it ends it well. Yeah, I mean, if you're yeah. gonna make a silly game like that, like don't don't make it, uh, don't sit there and make it take itself so seriously. Like, just yeah, exactly. embrace goofiness. Don't don't be rigid with it. Mm-hmm. That's always been like a a, mid, a a bit of an issue with a lot of like that's why a lot of games just suck because you sit there and they'll they'll make bad games like this, and then be upset that like they they suck. It's like, well, yeah, you guys just tightened your grip on this too much I mean, and fucked it up. No, I mean, I, honestly, with games like this, especially like these games that have a known property, it's not that they take themselves too seriously. They see it as, well, we have the property of, you know, like we're making a game or we're making a Ninja Turtles game, at which point they we can spend as little as possible on making this game and make money. It's a shovelware it's game. We know it's going to sell we can do the absolute minimum and make it a quick cash grab. And that's exactly what we do nine times out of ten. Right. Yeah, you got a point there. I'll definitely give you that. Yeah. Like, that happens yeah. a lot, too. I, like, that's why most of those kids' games absolutely suck. Every once in a while, yep. you get one that somehow ends up being really fun. And, I mean, I guess that's the key for just making it, like, you know, kids will play it for 20, 30 minutes or, hell, sometimes, on, on, like, on stop. Mm-hmm. And that's all they need to do. It might get grandma to buy. It. Oh, my my grandkid likes this. I'll buy it. And that's right, like, yeah. Must buy SpongeBob. Exactly. And then they uh, then they're gonna make their money. I mean, it's the reason why a lot of I'm gonna say most uh, games based off of movies end up not being good. So oh, like, yeah. oh well, people will recognize the movie, so just put the same main character in it and make the plot roughly the same and yeah just just do whatever we we really don't care they just always talk. seem to at the same time it seems like the studios the movie studios end up going like with the lowest bidder like a, a, a like mm-hmm. at best mediocre developer mm-hmm. and to, most of the time that we owned by like, Activision or WB and that Activision WB just go yeah you go ahead and make this garbage game because again it's a movie property time yeah just you don't slap have to the, the sl- yeah slap the towel on it and boom you're done yeah very few times like I, the lord of the rings the uh two towers and the return of the king game those games were awesome like but, surprisingly awesome did they follow the story though uh yeah i mean for the did most they? part yeah like you that, played through the, um... you added battles like you battled along and ends uh you yeah. battled in was um, that the the game series that was kind of like it was kind of like an RPG esque like I don't want to say Final Fantasy because that's just it was like a Diablo like, like a uh, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. A, okay it was a third person hack and slash 
It okay. was pretty simple in that regard, but you had a level up system. It actually had a system where you want new combos and stuff. The characters got cooler, and it was uh, it was actually so, I mean, really they, fun. So, I mean, they put some effort into it. That's that's what yeah. that is. They didn't it just go Lord of the Rings, go. Yeah, yeah. Graphically, it wasn't impressive for the time. Sure. It was actually kind of kind of ugly for the time, but yeah. the games ended up being pretty good and fun. They had cutscenes that were decent, and I mean. Some of the battles of the games were absolutely awesome. Uh, like set pieces. That's what, I mean, it made it a good game. There so, you yeah, go. That awesome. sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean, I'd play it. I still remember, I think, The Return of the King, the first... Was it The Return of the King? Um, the battles is when you're playing as uh, either Aragorn, Legolas, or Gimli. Mm -hmm. And you are just getting to uh, Minas Tirith. And so you are behind um, the orc army and you're attacking them from the back and you have to like destroy all of the equipment and stuff. Mm. And I don't know, it was, it ended up being pretty fun. Hey, there you go. I know there was one, um, I can't remember exactly which game. I think it was for Shadow of War or Shadows of Mordor. I can't remember. But there's a DLC that that's, see, and this is what I mean when I say just have fun with it. There's a DLC where it tackles a like an alternative universe story where what if Frodo didn't throw the ring into you know into the volcano? Sorry, spoilers for you know Lord of the Rings, which is however many years old. If you haven't um, fucking seen the movie, yeah, like, I, uh, like seriously. Okay, no, listen. If you haven't seen Lord of the Rings, you need you're no longer allowed to listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like just straight up, you just need to you need to turn it off now. Go sit in your room on your bed and contemplate the choices you've made in your life that you're listening to this podcast, but you haven't seen Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. So and that said, um, it's like uh, you go and one of the first things you do is you get to fight Frodo as a ring ring. That's pretty like, awesome. Right? Like, I mean, and it's just like, obviously. Was that the first, so that must have been the first one. And then Shadow of War was the second one. What was the like name? I said, I, I, I'm, I cannot, like, right offhand remember which game it was. Maybe one of the listeners will remember. I, I don't remember. But well, I Shadows of War like, hey. was the name of the second game. Yeah, no, Shadows of which, uh, speaking of which, not to get too far off topic, but it is kind of related. Um, yeah. Recently, they issued a patch which completely removed the uh the store all yeah. of that stuff and upped the experience points for a lot of things so you yeah, can no longer they realized oh wait we broke our own fucking game yeah we killed our game herp -a -derp. <laughs> like yeah no shit like you threw all these like you threw all these microtransactions in there and completely killed it like what I did mean, you, what you expect, expect from that yeah. yeah microtransactions kill literally everything like the only time oh, they wow. like listen the only time i'm ever okay with microtransactions is if i don't have to pay up front for the game if I don't have to pay up for sure, the game, sure. fine. The Charge Legends me things, model. you know? Like, like, yeah, the freemium model, the free-to-play model, mm -hmm. fine. Embrace that. If you're going to put microtransactions in there, either embrace the free-to-play freemium model or don't put them in there. It's, it, yeah, it goes... and, and in this case, it's even worse. It wasn't the fact that they had microtransactions. They were loot boxes. Yeah. Oh, so you had random oh, fucking no. bullshit. But it was also still pay to win. Or... Yeah. Or pay to play in, in this particular instance because it was yeah. such a grind to get to some of the 60, higher levels 70 hours to try and do the end game i think without paying for orcs oh i think it, i mean i think it was actually worse than that of course it that was pales, it was it was crazy it, it was yeah it was something ridiculous hours. it's like i mean it's like battlefront right like i mean i mean the loot box argument or model or whatever is like a whole conversation into itself so i mean we won't get too deep into it but i mean it's just like battlefront right like they oh, literally yeah. coded their game to give you worse stuff if you weren't paying for it i mean not to mention that with with battlefront um specifically battlefront 2 that redditor that sat yeah. down and calculated out how long you'd have to play to get enough mm -hmm. credits to buy darth vader it was something like a full time job over the course of a year in order to mm -hmm. unlock him. Mm -hmm. It was thousands oh, yeah. of hours, and yep. it was like, "Holy shit, no!" I was, yeah, I was actually going to buy that game until I heard that uh, that they were doing things like that, and then I was just like, "You know what? 
no, I'm not got <laughs> like I I already bought your game. I don't want to then have to pay further just to enjoy myself. So to add on to the shit pile that was Shadow of War, uh, not only did they have those random box loot box bullshits, um, I didn't know the amount of fucking DLC. Some of it story DLC this game had. Uh, if you want the whole everything edition of the game, mm-hmm. uh, you spend ninety nine bucks. Is... Nope, I'm out. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. Because there know why. are one, two, three, four. There are four DLCs. One of them is uh, actually, I think that that might be two. No, yeah, no, it's that's right. Uh, that's less if you buy them separately, obviously, or less if you buy the pack instead of buying yeah. them separately. I mean, uh, Desolation of Mordor, Slaughter Tribe Nemesis expansion, Outlaw Tribe Nemesis expansion, the Blade of Galandrail story expansion. Yeah, F- uh, four nice. DLCs. Uh, for three of them are fifteen bucks. One of them is twenty bucks. I mean, fuck the I ever mean, living hell out of WB. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I, I literally like Luke. We went, we went and talked the other day about how, like, I so long after it came out, just sat down and played uh, the first one, Shadows of Mordor, yeah, and the only reason, yeah, and the only reason why I played it is because I got the game like the game of the year edition quote unquote with like all the dlcs for eight dollars yeah like it's just like hey okay like i'm fine but i'm fine paying you know five ten extra dollars for dlc if you get some really cool stuff right but like no don't charge me an entirely separate game for some like hastily put together dlc yeah uh, that's saying that they have you know, I, I, dlc I... On top of, I still haven't played the first game. <laughs> I know I own the game. I can't find it on my. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's right called now. Middle Earth. Shadow Middle Earth. Order. That's what it is. Yeah, Middle Earth, I have Earth. the game. I I've apparently played one minute of it. <laughs> I, I actually really enjoyed it, <laughs> and I, I, I purchased it. it. I purchased it at the very end of 2015. At the, on the yeah. very last day, 12 yeah. 2015. So it must have been um, on sale. He launched it to make sure it worked. He it said, had, right, actually had plan. quite a bit of DLC too, but yeah, then like, um, like I got ninety nine, uh, two ninety nine. Holy shit! I have a ton of DLC for it. Um, I'm talking like you it must looks have at least like the ten to pack. twelve, fifteen. Yeah, I, I think I bought the actual game of the year edition or yeah, whatever. Yeah. If, whatever. If it was I want to upgrade to game of the year edition, it's only ten bucks. But um, no, I'm good. Yep, I bought Game of the Year Edition, which is only $20 The problem right with now. that game is it's kind of, I mean, it's a very Assassin's Creed inspired game. Mm-hmm. And like, I think Jake and I, Jake mentioned the same thing where you complete the first area, you go to the second area and play for a little bit and realize, oh, this is the exact same thing. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's fun, but it just, it does feel like it gets old pretty quick. I put 22 hours into it, too. And I was after that. I was like, okay, I, that's, I don't. The story isn't engaging enough to keep me playing. Yeah, that's that's about where I was. And the biggest thing is, you have a map, right? And anybody who plays Assassin's Creed knows that uh, one of the biggest things that you do is you climb up to the points of the what? What do they call them? The, places, the towers. Yeah, things. just the big yeah. towers where you sit on the thing, you reveal the area, and the very cool like look at all of these graphics, and then you leap a faith off the top, right? And so they kind of do that because you miss the fucking hay ba- hay bale, right? <laughs> that only happens so, to you. <laughs> so they do the exact same thing in this game. Luke, I'm going I to mean, have to disagree with, with you there because there are tons of clips on YouTube of that happening. <laughs> I believe you. Fuck you, buddy. Anyway, I'm sorry, Jay. I don't mean to cut you off. It's <laughs> no, just... you're you're good. And it was just like so. I mean, you're just going along. I ran through hordes of you know orcs and all this other stuff to get to these these reveal points because in this game they're more important because then they reveal where like the hidden stuff is and where the objectives are and and blah 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 blah. and i mean like i'm talking like a huge like 10,000 yard or 10,000 meter map you know like it takes a long time and then you can fast travel between them right so it's important then you get all of them do everything and then you go to the second area where it gives you a map that's a little bit bigger with nothing unlocked. And then you literally have to do it all again. I was just like, eh, like, come on. 
couldn't you have just kept all of it in the same area? I mean, I already went through the work of revealing all these areas once. You're then going to make me do it again? Yeah, of course. I don't know. I, I, I personally just thought that it was like stretching out a game for the sake of trying to get more like playtime hours from it. I but mean that I that know. that does happen. Like it's called padding, and yeah, I mean they're, they're yeah. like Skyrim padded its 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 entire thing with fetch quests and stuff. So it's like mm-hmm. yeah, it happens. Like the, it feels like majority of that game is padding. Like I've said before, though, Nemesis system is an awesome awesome system. I fucking love that idea. Uh, I like what they did in Shadow of War. It seems like they really did upgrade it. It's just unfortunate that it had all of the DLC fucking bullshit and all of the loot crate shit that basically ruined that game because from what i've heard is just the game itself is actually pretty good right and the nemesis system is incredibly engaging and cool and then they ruined it by you know you could just buy orcs instead of having to go and mind fuck them that and that too it also not only do you have to get the towers again the entire army that you've been like building up and like mind controlling and you're like you're like you're setting your generals and getting all this stuff with mind control powers yeah. because you know lord of the rings um then literally it gives you like a whole new army where like none of the people are mind controlled anymore and the ones that you did mind control don't really matter and it's like okay so then why did i just spend you know six to ten hours running around mind controlling these these orcs which are is not necessarily easy to do depending on the situation in which you find them in. And then now it doesn't matter. It's like, and maybe it did at the end of the game. Maybe once you were done, it all culminated into something. I didn't finish the yeah. game, quite frankly, so I, I don't know. But I just thought that it was kind of a, a cop-out. Like, hey, spend more hours on our game doing the exact same they thing. They didn't, yeah, the gameplay, like the, the just, it, it's another case of the open world was the first thing they thought of they didn't come mm-hmm. up with actual missions or anything exactly. so it just feels like you do the same exact thing over and over again mm. my same problem with wildlands yeah. and a lot of those games a is dragon a- dragon age inquisition no i thought dragon age inquisition had enough inquisition had enough it, it was an rpg you go to a dungeon you clear the dungeon you fight through things it's not like you run around and do the same exact forts over and over again I mean, I, I don't know. It was a little bit too repetitive for me, just personally. Like, I'm not saying you're yeah, wrong. I mean, it right, still had story missions and things. That's, it, that's fair. It was nothing compared to these open world clusterfucks. Yeah, that's fair. just like every Ubisoft game ever. <laughs> every one without every fail. Every single one of them. It's it's. I think it's where they go wrong most of the time. Is they just don't. There's there's good things about having linear missions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like if an open world game takes you and you go to like GTA, you go to the mission section and then you're put on a path that's a linear like, okay, you're doing these objectives here. It's Mm -hmm. still in that open world, but it feels like you have some story, some reason, some some point to what you're doing. Exactly. I don't know. It's just it always feels better. It's like Rockstar knows how to make that work, whereas the Ubisofts and shit, they they just don't. Mm hmm. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, why would they? They're terrible at everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, Especially straight up, games. they're bad. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you, Far Cry 5. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, I thought Far Cry 5 was a... Uh, I heard only good things about Far Cry 5. Oh, my everybody God. Liked the it. ending is fucking awful. Oh, is it? Yeah. And it's Far a, Cry 5 yeah. is Far Cry 4, which is Far Cry 3. It is the same fucking game over and over again. Uh, just little upgrades. Don't get me wrong. If Far Cry 3 and 4 didn't exist, Far Cry 5 would be game of the year. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. Far Cry 3 and 4 exist, which make Far Cry 5 feel like just another Far Cry. Uh, yeah. That's... That, and the ending is so fucking bad that, uh, yeah, it just, it's, it's awful. It's I mean, fucking terrible. I mean, I won't lie. I'm literally basing my entire knowledge on Far Cry 5 uh, on uh, Critical's video of him just running around, hitting random people and blowing stuff up. So, Well, yeah, that's when the game is actually fun. It's just when you play the game, it's no longer fun. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, you know, hitting shit with shovels and, you know, one-shotting them is, like, <laughs> yeah. is amazing. Like, he spent more time I got, just throwing I got, shovels at people. I gotta be honest with you, if I ever, like, 
bought the game and played it, it would just be so that I could do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I just want to, I just want to hit things with shovels and kill them because I don't know why, but that is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. I mean, you're running around hitting religious cultists in the face with a shovel. It's great. Mm-hmm. Or you're throwing it or you get the shovel launcher thing and you could throw that. <laughs> or you could fire shovel that. Launcher? Yeah, didn't they add like a shovel launcher, Luke, where it literally God, fires shovels? So. They did. Yeah, they added a shovel launcher. Because that's like an example of when they do stuff that, you know, they actually listen to their fans. People love chucking shovels. Here's a shovel launcher. See, I mean, that's just. Oh, and Jake, Jake, you can yes. carry up to like, what, 27 shovels without the shovel uh, launcher? You could have, when you're you carrying, I think it was 18. Nine and nine. So you and then carry, you could carry have, and then you had like nine baseball bats as well. See, I mean, that's that's what I mean. Like that kind of calls back to what we were talking about earlier about like just have fun with the game. Yeah. Right. Like, like yeah, you've got your story, you've got your missions, you know, you've got your. Uh, I don't know how the graphics are, so I'm not going to say whether or not you've got them for Far Cry Five. But like, you know, I mean, just like let your players do stupid stuff and let people have fun. I mean, is is that not at its core what video games are supposed to be like entertainment? Yes. I mean, I would think so. You so I mean, it, yeah. For some people, it's an art form. Some people, it's a storytelling sure, medium. Sure. But overall, yeah, it's for entertainment. Yeah. So, like, if 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 your player wants to go fight armed cultists armed with eighteen shovels, well, I mean, why not? You know, it's like it's like with Zelda. If you want to go fight Ganon in your underwear, you can totally do that. I mean, and people you're, do. Like, you're, you know how many different? Well, we all know how many different challenges there are for Ocarina of Time. Like, no, no, I, I'm specifically, I'm specifically referring to Breath of the Wild. In yeah. Breath of the Wild, oh, you can start the though. game and you can take a, you. You start the game in your underwear. Right, and mm-hmm. you can sure. spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played. You start the game in your fucking underwear, and you can go <laughs> straight to Ganon right away from the get. Well, you got to get through the beginning area, but once you're through the beginning area, once you get off the Great Plateau, you can literally go straight to Ganon and fight him with three hearts, a stick, and a wooden pot lid as your shield. Can't you just like launch yourself off of a rock and land right at the Temple of Time? Uh, um. There's the amount of stuff you can do with the whole launching thing. It's crazy. Like it's that's, what, uh, that's what a lot of that's what a lot of people do in speedruns. Yeah, it, is though because there's some some sort of like carefully measured and calculated way where you freeze the rock and then it like builds up momentum. Obviously, when you hit it, and you freeze it a certain way, hit it at a certain angle. And then climb on top of it, and then it'll launch you off the Great Plateau, and you'll land like on the roof of the Temple of Time. Well, no, because yeah. it's te- no, you, you can't leave the Great Plateau to the Temple of Time, because Temple the Temple of Time, of time, is time on the Great yeah, it's on the Great Plateau. So you're thinking of them landing in Hyrule Castle. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I know they just launch themselves from <laughs> on a rock to get to some place, and then it helps them speed run the game. That's all I know. Well, like I said, though, you can you can totally start the game, and if you're not exploiting it, you can you can get the initial runes, you can get the initial things, and I guess you can either choose four hearts or an extra thing to your stamina meter. So if you choose the extra thing to your stamina meter, you can literally go fight Ganon with three hearts, and like I said, a stick and a pot lid. Now, you're probably not going to win, but you can try. You can certainly try. I don't know. I, I want to say you probably can't win, but then there are people out there literally fighting, like, the strongest enemy in the game with, like, pot lids and three health. Or there's a video of one guy fighting the same monster because Ganon is not the strongest enemy in the game. But uh, no. there is there's you can fight, like, Lionels and shit, and there's a guy fighting him with a fucking rock. He just sits there and keeps hitting them with a metal boulder over and over again. Oh, he great. uses the power and just keeps slamming the boulder into him? Yeah, he keeps dodging and, yep, just dropping the boulder on him. It's like, <laughs> okay, why not? Fuck it. Well, yeah. we've been going on over an hour now. What do you guys want to do? You want to, I, I, we should probably wind ourselves down there. Yeah, we can cut it down. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was good. That was good. Good, good discussion. Good. Uh, the right. one thing we were going to talk about a little bit about, just uh, to throw it out there, uh, and we can go into it next week maybe. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is um, he's doing a R-rated 
maybe home not, alone maybe not sort of movie. Yeah, yeah Home Alone clone, more like yeah, it's like a clone mm -hmm. or a parody, maybe like a even like an homage. Where uh, it's it's called Stone Alone. So, is that what it's going to be? That's called? what it's called. Seriously? It's called I, Stone I was, Alone. I, oh my god! I was just yeah. going to look up the title. So yeah, anybody that that I mean, if you like Deadpool or anything Ryan Reynolds does, which you know is Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. That that is it, he is Deadpool. That's canon. Ryan Reynolds is Wade Wilson. <laughs> Yeah, he um, was born to play that role. He was. So I mean, like, if if you thought that Home Alone wasn't you know brutal enough, you know, you thought maybe uh, Marv and Harry should have just died from getting paint cans and lead pipes to their face, then you'll probably like this movie because it's gonna be rated R. It's gonna have Deadpool in it without the costume, and you know, it's, well, it's, without it's, the testicle I, face no, too. He's, he's um a uh, producer. So he's. There's oh, another, I don't Ryan think Reynolds himself won't actually. Oh, he might not that. be in it. Well, we'll see. You know, we don't know enough. It's just now coming out that he's producing this, hmm. so we'll, it'll all that information will come out later. However, now that I know it, it sounds like it's a stoner comedy. Maybe hmm. it won't be so much like gore. But if it was like two stoners trying to protect their house from criminals, that's gonna that be would amazing. still be funny. As yeah, fuck. no, that's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Like, what are we going to do, man? I will, I will certainly go. Yeah, down. no. Like, um, according to IMDb, uh, he will be producing and potentially starring in the movie. Oh, yes. Yes, so there's still, please. There's still no, like, confirmed information about it. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, that's why that's why the word potentially is in there because he might yeah. not be, but he's definitely producing it. Um, it's being produced under his, uh, his maximum effort production company. Which I'm is, uh, of course, production. owned by Fox or funded by Fox, but it's his company. So I mean, yeah, no, I, oh, I love yeah. that he did too. Like I love that he started uh, started a production company with that name. Yes. Anything, anything Ryan Reynolds ever does again, Fox is just like, yes, please. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, not not, Disney. Well, yeah, not uh, soon to be or Disney. Soon to be. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Disney is still going to let him do his thing. All right, let's oh, go ahead. Oh, no, and, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. Yeah, let's go ahead and wind this down, though, before we get off there on a tangent again. All right. Yeah, that was... So that was fun. We didn't exactly get to our main topic, but that doesn't matter. We had a good time sitting here chatting. You know. And then that's the uh, whole goal, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, that's totally what we started this with. It's just a couple of dudes sitting down talking about shit. Yep. So, Yeehaw! As um, always, check us out on uh, the... On the interwebs, social medias, you know, our website, Facebook. Well, listen to us on uh, iTunes and Google Play, uh, Google Podcasts yeah. now. So, you know, iTunes, uh, give us a rating over there. Give yeah. us some uh, notoriety. That's that's like that'd be awesome. I think it's too late at this point. But <laughs> I think it's too late. Hey, never, you never it's know. Never too late. Yeah, it's well, never no, too it, late to it's, get it's too late for the ratings over on iTunes. Like it, it's it's like the first six weeks of the podcast are the most crucial, and uh, yeah. you know, but it doesn't matter. Give oh, us a rating. Well, that's it. Then we're done. Yeah, yeah, screw them and their systems. We might as well quit now. We're just never going to be successful. Um, <laughs> nah, no. Nah, wow, we. I mean, we do. Joe's being a goddamn downer today. Yeah, I get. I'm always a downer. Get... That's 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 my thing. Fuck. Fuck, yeah, I mean, these, fuck these, you. I mean, and I, I can say because, you know, obviously a lot of people that listen don't know. But, I mean, these other two guys, they try real hard every week to get this podcast out for you guys. So give them a little bit of love. They put in a lot of effort. Give me some money. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey yeah, we do have a Patreon money. if you want to check that out. Help yeah, us yeah. Uh, get a new mix report. <laughs> yeah, we need a new mix report. Uh, don't worry, yeah. though. We'll solve this problem eventually. You won't have to hear the uh, the weird bleeps and fucks up as, as the audio comes across the internet and gets raped by Spectrum's terrible service. <laughs> uh, yep. Yes. Oh, man. All right, guys. <laughs> for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. I'm Jake. Yay, Jake. You guys have a good Bye. day. See y'all later. Bye. Fuck Warner Brothers. <laughs>